you know, I've, I was talking to a friend uh, yesterday, and she was reading Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which is a new book, um, and she's been reading this year mostly, like, you know, canonized literature, like, Nabokov and Camus, um, I can't remember some of the other stuff she's been reading, but anyway, she asked me about, um, it's not a shot, it was, this is not a shot of alcohol, just a little bit of tea. Anyway, she asked me about tomorrow, 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 if I'd heard of it, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, but I don't really think it's for me. And she was like, well, what about it isn't for you? And I was like, well, just some aspects of the book. Um, and she said, oh, is it like the programmer video game sort of aspect of the book? Because that's very small. And I was like, yeah, that's it. That's why. Um, and then she kept asking questions and really it just essentially was revealed that I didn't think that that really book really counted as literature instead you know for reasons I'm not really sure of like the way it's marketed um, the, I haven't looked or read the book at all um, but I, I just thought of it like as like entertainment fiction um, rather than literature. But the more I thought about it afterwards, we kept talking too. She was like, you know, it's hard to tell unless something is canonized and in and in in, you know stands the test of time whether or not something is literature or not. And I think that's uh, a good point, like what makes it into the canon and what the canon is and who decides that um, is up for debate. And I don't really, that's not very like important to me because I think you can have your own like personal canon um, and I guess related to that is that like if I could go back and have that conversation again, instead of my like, I had like some snootiness and some like uppity, like I don't fuck with that type of entertainment fiction. You know, I like literature. Um, if I could go back, I could, I would say instead like, you know, this is what literature feels like to me. And here's the way that I go about finding contemporary work that is trustworthy to me and is pursuing literature rather than um, more sales or market pressure responding to market pressure like um, and I don't know some books of literature that I think are trustworthy you know in the contemporary space sell a lot of copies but m for the most part um, I feel like, you know, whatever di distinction I'm trying to make, um, for better or for worse, there is like, you know, entertainment fiction and literature, but I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical of that, uh, separation that I'm making in my mind. And, um, I asked my mom, my mom was reading, I don't know the name of the book, but it was about, a. An, it was from the perspective of an octopus in um, captivity and she was talking to me about this book and already in my mind I knew it was like, you know, one of these tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow type books, like kind of sells well, interesting um, premise. But already in my mind, I was like, that's not literature, you know? But I asked her, I said, uh, you know, she was enjoying the book and telling me about it. And I said, you know, 
So what's is is there a difference between that book and like Tao Lin, who luckily is my mom's favorite author, um, or Nausgaard, like she got into Nausgaard, which is also incredible. Um, and immediately my mom was like, oh yeah, like that's not, they are, they are two different things. I read, you know, the octopus book for like entertainment, um, and it's interesting, but, you know, Tao Lin helps me to see the world deeply and in a different way. Um, I'm paraphrasing, but that was her distinction. Like, this is entertainment, and I turned the pages, and literature um, helps me look deeply at the world. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, maybe Harold Bloom knows, or like some contemporary literary critics are talking about this sort of thing, but I don't know, it's a real question to me, and I didn't like necessarily my response to my friend yesterday about, you know, these books versus these books, you know? It just felt kind of like gross that I had that separation in my mind. Um, I do think there is a difference. Um, but I'm asking you, you know, okay, what does literature feel like to you? And then can, you know, maybe let's not Google or read other people's definition of what literature is versus like entertainment fiction, but come up with um, our own and what feels like uh, what works for us. Because in my mind, I'm not trying to write like tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. My novel wants to be these novels, you know? My, my novel wants to be like fucking Nausgaard's novels and Gordon Lish's novels and Sheila Hetty's novels. Um, those are the people that I, you know, want to be uh, better than. Um, not, not the like entertainment fiction books, but I don't know, it just seems like wrong to say like this is li literature and this is not, but there is a difference. Um, and I guess I, I could read tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and come up with a good definition um, personally about what makes that different from all of these books, but um, I don't know. I tried to make a video last night, um, the content of which I'll probably still end up making a video about, but I just found, my, I did, obviously didn't post it, didn't make it, um, I just found myself like kind of repeating old beliefs and ideas that I've developed over the years about, you know, what's good and right in, in arts, um, and, you know, my medium is writing, uh, and I was like, fuck, man, these ideas are, like, boring to me now. Um, I think they've served me and gotten me this far, but um, I just kind of felt that I had, like, buried my head in the sand with these um, ideas that I'm hanging on to about, like, what's good and what isn't. And I don't know. Uh, I think it's time to, like, think differently, have new ideas, um, engage with other people who are also thinking about this stuff. Like, I have I know that um, some of you are, like, reading contemporary stuff that is, um, has integrity and um, is pursuing this place called literature. Um, and if you're watching this video or interested in this stuff, like you care about writing and care about literature and um, just wondering, you know, what actually is it and what makes it different from all the other books? And uh, I know that like contemporary American publishing landscape doesn't have much room for literature or doesn't allow 
much literature in. Um, you know, I will make a video later of like some contemporary writers that I think are trustworthy and are pursuing that like literary aim. Um, but I don't know necessarily how to, what to call, what is that aim, you know, what makes it difference, different. Um, I thought earlier while I was thinking about this video that maybe I use the word integrity, you know, and I was thinking about like Gordon Lish, um, who a lot of people like, um, and his books are, I'm also reading right now Dune Messiah, I wish I had it right here with me, it's by my bed, but, um, like I love Dune Messiah, but Dune Messiah and Gordon Lish's Peru or self-imitation of myself, those are like worlds apart and not just stylistically, but like what their aims are. I think Dune in general is an interesting topic because it's a genre, but potentially has some literary aims too. Nevertheless, you know, the idea that I had earlier when I was trying to, you know, define literature to myself in a non-uppity kind of snooty way that didn't feel gross or like just spouting off old beliefs that I've, you know, gotten really um, encased in was that like potentially books, novels, stories that are pursuing literature have this sort of like internal integrity and so the writer isn't responding to external pressures of like what narrative style is selling more of recently or what um, readers in the majority will respond to um, positively uh, rather they have like Gordon Lish had this idea of voice driven like mind inner nah what is that called when you're um, stream of consciousness I don't his stuff isn't like that and I don't like that word uh, but anyway, Gordon Lish's books are so like spoken um, and the integrity of his work is like a dedication towards that vision of um, spoken speech driven stories rather than like thinking, oh, no one's going to understand this sentence. You know, the majority of um, the buying public out there aren't going to understand this sentence. Or all of the books being published right now, of all the books being published right now, there is nothing even close to this. And so how is a reader going to respond to this? You know, his vision was simply... I have this thing that I'm trying, it seems new, there is something there that is artful and I'm pursuing it. His whole career was pursuing that vision. He's alive still, but he's nearly probably dead. I mean, sorry, Gordon Lish, but he's in his 80s or 90s or something. Uh, anyway, I don't know, maybe that, for me, as I'm thinking about this and asking you, um, you know, rather than like reading Harold Bloom or some literary critic who has some well um, thought out definition of what makes literature literature, um, I'm sensing that my idea is that there is some internal integrity 
of the work where the writer is focused on something that the work itself has demanded rather than what people what might keep people reading or what might keep people what might people respond to what might people buy more uh, copies of um, at the same time like I, I think a lot of great writers of literature are thinking about the audience and what they're responding to um, but not in such a way to like write cliffhangers into the book you know to keep them going um, I don't know I don't want to make this video super long but I, I sense that I really don't have a clear um, definition of, of what literature is and I sense that I have some kind of weird uh, snootiness about what counts and what doesn't um, but I know there is a difference um, and I'd like to maybe broaden my perspective instead of like bury my head in the sand ever more um, and I think it's time for like new ideas uh, it's time for new ideas for me uh, and I don't know I'm interested to hear like what people what literature feels like to you um, versus what like yeah I read like old pulp sci-fi I read pulp horror and that stuff's different I guess I don't read any like contemporary like um, pop pop novels um, and maybe I should to kind of sense out what the goals of those books are versus the goals of these books that I love. Um, but maybe, you know, some of you do read, have read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, and also have read Sheila Hetty's Pure Color or Tao Lin's, you know, Leave Society, and you have a good um, inner definition of, like, what, what makes those different. Um, and I don't know, hopefully you can help me root out some suspect, um, ideas and beliefs that I have, um, that one is better than the other or, um, one is higher and the other is lower, but thanks for listening and, um, doing a live stream. Uh, of writing just after this um, and for the people that have been joining in thank you and I hope it's been beneficial to you um, it's super helpful to me to have some accountability because so I can put the camera on and know that like a dozen to a hundred people are tuning in and writing with me um, and I mean, I kind of end up forgetting about the camera after a while and I'm just writing, but, um, you know, if even just to start, it's, it's really helpful. Um, and nice to know that like, um, some folks are like finding solidarity, uh, in that actual process of making work. Um, and hopefully it's fun. Anyway, I'm, I'm going on. See ya.